Welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast. I am your host, Christoph Ambrose, and tonight's episode is going to take us back once again to World War II. And uh, it's going to be a little bit longer than usual, but that's okay. This will keep you entertained for just a little little longer. And uh, this episode is, uh, of course, going to be brought to you by one of our great partners with this show, and that's The Bearded Detailer. Uh, visit thebeardeddetailer.com for all of your automotive detailing solutions. Uh, also over on the swag store there, they got some cool stuff like Laminex films to help keep your car protected. And some maintenance uh, supplies for your vehicle as well. When you're over there, be sure to use the promo code TOH10 for 10% off your order. And uh, just so you know, when you do use that promo code, that's not only getting you 10% off your order, but that lets the bearded detailer know that 75% of the profits from that order are going to be donated to the Congressional Medal of Honor Society every month. That's good things, good things. So the bearded detailer, or your dirt, is his business. And now, a tale of honor. Edward H. O'Hare was born on the 13th of March, 1914, in St. Louis, Missouri. His parents were divorced in 1927, and O'Hare and his two sisters stayed in St. Louis with their mother while his father moved to Chicago. His father was a lawyer and worked with Al Capone before turning against him and helped convict Al Capone of tax evasion. O'Hare went on to graduate from the Western Military Academy in 1932 and continued on to U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis, Maryland in 1933. After graduation, O'Hare served two years aboard the USS New Mexico and then began flight training at NAS Pensacola in Florida in 1939. O'Hare's most notable flight of his World War II service took place enemy-held waters north of New Ireland on the 20th of February, 1942. Lieutenant O'Hare and his wingman were the only U.S. Navy fighters that were available in the air when a wave of Japanese bombers began attacking their aircraft carrier, the USS Lexington. While still on board, radar had picked up an unknown aircraft 35 miles away from the ship, and a six-plane combat patrol was launched with two fighters being directed to investigate. An enemy Kawanishi H-6K-4 Type 97 flying boat, or Mavis, was shot down 42 miles away from the carrier, and then a second Mavis was shot down at another radar contact 35 miles away. A third radar contact appeared but reversed its flight, and then a fourth radar contact appeared 47 miles west of the carrier and was closing in fast. O'Hare was one of several pilots that were launched to intercept the incoming Japanese Mitsubishi G-4M bombers, or Bettys, of which five had already been shot down. Only 24 minutes later, a second formation of Bettys were picked up on the radar only 12 miles out on the east side of the carrier. O'Hare and his wingman, Duff DeFilo, hurried back to the carrier as they were the only protection left for the Lexington. They arrived with DeFilo's guns jammed and only 1,500 feet above eight Bettys attacking the carrier. O'Hare's only option was to protect the carrier and with only enough ammunition for about 34 seconds of firing. His actions during the defense of the Lexington is something that you would only think you'd see in an action movie, but actually happened and earned him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, For conspicuous gallantry and intradeputy in aerial combat, at grave risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, as section leader and pilot of Fighting Squadron 3 on 20 February 1942. Having lost the assistance of his teammates, Lieutenant O'Hare interposed his plane between his ship and an advancing enemy formation of nine attacking twin-engine heavy bombers. Without hesitation, alone and unaided, he repeatedly attacked this enemy formation at close range in the face of intense combined machine gun and cannon fire. Despite this concentrated opposition, Lieutenant O'Hare, by his gallant and courageous action, his extremely skillful marksmanship in making the most of every shot of his limited amount of ammunition, 
shot down five enemy bombers and severely damaged a sixth before they reached the bomb release point. As a result of his gallant action, one of the most daring, if not the most daring, single action in the history of combat aviation, he undoubtedly saved his carrier from serious damage. O'Hare returned to his carrier, and amazingly, his fighter had only been hit with one bullet which had disabled the airspeed indicator. It was calculated that O'Hare had used about 60 rounds of ammunition for each bomber that he had destroyed. His fighter had been nicknamed White F-15 and had been brought to Pearl Harbor for repairs along with other planes. The plane had been transferred to the USS Yorktown, and a new pilot had been assigned to White F-15. After being told by O'Hare to take good care of his plane, the fighter unsuccessfully took off and rolled down the deck and into the water. The pilot was recovered, but White F-15 was not. Because O'Hare had shot down five bombers, he became a flying ace and was selected for promotion to lieutenant commander. O'Hare also became the first naval aviator to receive the Medal of Honor. His wife, Rita, placed the medal around his neck on the 21st of April, 1942, with President Roosevelt looking on. O'Hare received a welcome home parade, with 60,000 people in attendance. O'Hare went on to participate in several war bond tours as well. He also relocated to Maui, Hawaii, to instruct other pilots in combat tactics. He later flew more missions in the Pacific, receiving the Distinguished Flying Cross, and then a gold star in lieu of another Distinguished Flying Cross. O'Hare's final mission was on the night of the 26th of November, 1943. Nighttime tactics had been, had been developed for air superiority, and O'Hare volunteered to lead the first nighttime fighter attack from a carrier. It has never been confirmed what brought down O'Hare's fighter that night, for many years, it has been speculated that rounds from friendly fire accidentally downed his plane, but more recently, it has been clearly stated that enemy Betty Fire had killed O'Hare. On the 9th of December, 1943, the official word that O'Hare was missing in action had been put out. He was declared officially killed in action one year later, on the 26th of November, 1943. His widow, Rita, received his posthumous decorations, including a Purple Heart, and the Navy Cross. Edward H. O'Hare's name was later engraved into the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific Wall of the Missing in Honolulu, and in March of 1963, President John F. Kennedy would do a wreath-laying ceremony at an airport that was once known as the Chicago Area Orchard Depot Airport. You may know this airport a little better by the name given to it in 1949 as a tribute to the great naval aviator, O'Hare International Airport. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you so much for listening to Tales of Honor podcast. And if you like this podcast, please be sure to leave a nice review, a rating, and tell a friend. You can let them know that they can find this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, Facebook, many places. Many, many places that offer podcasts all around. You can see more information on Facebook, Instagram, and at thebeardeddetailer.com slash T-O-H podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please send them right to me at talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrose. Thanks for listening.